Today we're going to be going over how to commission a drive within TI Portal using Start Drive. So you can see here I've got the G120 modular drive with the IoT-2. So here we are within TI Portal version 15.1 using Start Drive. I've already got my drive selected with my control unit and my power unit. But what we're going to do is go in and assign an IP address and then use commissioning wizard within TI Portal Start Drive. So first we're going to do is we're going to double click on this Ethernet port down here and we're going to scroll, bring our properties window up and we'll see our Ethernet address here. So we're going to assign an Ethernet IP address here, as well as generate our Profinet device name automatically. So our Profinet device name is what we're going to be using. We are communicating with the PLC, HMI, several devices on the same network. It helps identify this drive to the main PLC. In our case, we're not using a PLC today, but it's good to always generate that Profinet device name. So once I've selected those items, I'm going to save my project. And then I'm going to go into here, into commissioning, here on the left hand side in the tree. And we're going to be using the commissioning wizard here today. So once I click on that commissioning window, wizard, it's going to pop up this new window. So we've got a couple of different application classes that we can select. Expert is if you're going to enter in all the parameter information yourself. And then you've got standard and, and dynamic. And it kind of gives you some information here on, on what you select. The most common is going to be standard drive control. So we're going to hit next. Uh, and so now that we've got to tell it, you know, if we're using a PLC or not, you know, if you're using a PLC, is the drive going to take care of it? Or is the PLC going to tell the drive what to do? In our case, we're just going to be using a drive and that's it. So now you can kind of select your different I.O. configurations. They've got some preset for conveyors and things like that. But most of the time, we're just going to select standard I.O. with analog set point. So now we're going to start getting into some of the options on what your drive and your motor are. So here we're going to tell it what kind of motor are we using. So I'm actually using a 50 hertz IAC motor at 240 volt. I don't have a filter or braking resistor, so we'll hit next. So now we're going to have a drop down box here for motor configuration. So you can either select an order number if you have a Siemens motor you can select the number or you can just enter the motor data and nameplate information. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to hit enter motor data and then we can kind of tell it some of the different kind of motors that you might have, whether it's a standard induction ink synchronous motor or some of these motors from Siemens. We're actually working with the one LA7 motor today from Siemens. So we're going to select that. And then you need to tell it what kind of connection you have, star or delta. So we have a star connection. And then here's where we're going to fill out information off of our motor nameplate. So I'm going to be filling this in for the 50 hertz operation. So our motor current is going to be 0.88 amp. Our kilowatt is going to be 0.18 and our RPMs 2820. All right. So then I'm going to be working on 230 volts, 50 hertz, and we have natural ventilation for our cooling type. It's also going to ask if we have a temperature sensor or not, so we don't. So we'll land there and hit next. We do not have a motor holding brake, so we can hit next. And then it's going to give you these parameters here that they call the most important parameters. They've got them predefined for you, so you can just check through this if you want, but you can also kind of go in here and set, you know, if you want to ramp up or ramp up down or uh, quick off times, you can just see as need be. So we'll hit next. And then you need to kind of tell it, do you have speed dependent load or a constant load? For our purpose, we're going to hit constant load. And then here's some of the different options uh, for motor identification. Motor identification is important. You can inhibit it if you want. I don't recommend that. You can either do at standstill or once it starts on operation. And what the motor identification going to do is each motor has its nameplate, but then each motor has slight variations and tolerances within that motor nameplate. And so it helps your drive tune to that specific motor. So anytime you change the motor with your drive, you want to make sure you redo a, a motor identification. So we'll hit at standstill. And so here's a summary. You can just kind of scroll through and make sure everything is, is selected and correct, you know, with your nameplate and things like that. So once we're done with that, we'll hit finish. So now we've done our commissioning wizard. So we're going to save and then we're going to right click here and we are going to download to the device. So now it's going to bring up this window where we have to figure out our connection to our device and it's going to have our IP address listed here. So we've got a, our drop down box for our interface and I am currently using Ethernet cable as well as a USB D to Ethernet adapter. So I'm going to select my adapter here and then I'm going to hit start search. So we'll see that I have my G120 right here as well as the address on it. So that's what I want to do. So I'm going to hit load. So this new window is going to pop up and show me my load preview. So it's saying that I need to save my parameterization into EEPROM. So that's fine. We'll go ahead and do that. And now, so a common issue you might run into is the firmware versions on your device. 
might be different than what the, you selected in the project. Typically, it can be worked around. So it's, you see here that it's saying they are compatible but not identical. Download is still possible. So that's fine. We're going to go ahead and download anyways and load it into our drive. All right, so once we hit load, it's going to take a couple of minutes and it's going to go through and you'll hear your drive click and on and off. So it's saving it and resetting itself. So now that that's done, I can go in here to our commissioning and I can go into control panel. And once I bring up the control panel, I can actually gain control of our drive. But first I need to go online. So I'm going to hit the go online button. Now that I'm online, you'll notice that I've got this orange bar across the top for our G120. That means with NTI portal that you are online with the device. So now I'm in the control panel. So I'm going to hit activate and it's going to pop up this message the saying the master control will be activated. Do I want to continue? Hit accept. So now you'll notice that I am now orange here again. So that means that I'm online with the control panel. So I can type in a speed here and then I can scroll over and I can hit forward. And so now if everything has been done correctly, my drive is going through a motor set point. So it is actually making sure that the motor is tuned directly with that drive. So once that's done, we'll hit set to enable our drive. We have our speed still typed in. And we'll notice here on the left that it says ready for switching on. So I'm going to hit forward. And so now you notice that we are operation enabled. My drive is spinning in the background, if you can hear it. And I typed in that I wanted to go at 1200 RPM and my actual speed is 1200.1 RPM. So that's it for commissioning a drive within Start Drive and TI portal. We set our IP address and then we also went through the commissioning wizard and typed in our motor nameplate data as well as a few other parameters. We tested it with our control panel and we are up and running and we're ready for next steps including using it with the TLC or other things. Thank you.